Hey everybody, my name is Darren Fung. I'm a screen composer based out of Los Angeles. Uh, here we are for another episode of From the Trenches. I've got two incredible musicians, composers, songwriters uh, with us today. Uh, Natalie Bonnet has had and continues to have an incredible career as a professional violinist. Uh, she has recently embarked on a career as a screen composer with many credits in production music and uh, television music with Hallmark. She recently won a Grammy for her composing and performing work on the album Woman Warriors, The Voices of Change, and she splits her time between Los Angeles and Montreal. Alex Pekowski is a producer, multi-instrumentalist, artist, and songwriter who has also transitioned into career as a screen composer. With numerous sync and composing credits ranging from Disney to PlayStation, she's a recent grad at the Canadian Film Centre Slate Music Residency and is based in Toronto. So welcome, Alex and Nat. Thank you so much hey. for joining us today. Thank you. Today we're talking about career pivoting, and because um, most of you have sort of made this kind of pivot into into screen composing, and so I, I just maybe we'll start with you, Natalie. What made you decide to do a career pivot, and what were some of the challenges that you faced? Oui. Um, donc j'étais une époque euh, à l'époque j'étais dans une phase de ma carrière où je voulais explorer. Uh, J'ai commencé à faire. Uh, des stages en improvisation, en jazz, en musique du monde. Je me suis mis à tourner avec plusieurs euh, artistes locaux, populaires, euh, encore une fois, jazz world, tout ça. Donc, euh, j'apprenais à improviser, ce qui était très nouveau pour moi. J'ai vraiment euh, dive in, j'ai vraiment plongé euh, les deux pieds là-dedans, puis je m'amusais vraiment beaucoup. Euh, et plus je faisais ça, j'ai découvert que je pouvais en fait utiliser ces nouvelles euh, explorations-là, puis peut-être créer des pièces qui, qui pourraient être jouées, donc éventuellement. Euh, en tournée, euh, j'avais le temps beaucoup dans les, les transports, donc les journées de transport, je me suis intéressée à des cours en ligne. J'ai commencé à suivre des cours d'arrangement, d'orchestration et éventuellement de composition. J'ai fini par faire tout le, le, le master certificate, donc le, le certificat de master <rire> à Berkeley en, en composition pour film télé. Et euh, là, j'ai commencé à pitcher pour des émissions, des séries à Montréal. Et euh, j'étais chanceuse d'avoir des amis quand même dans l'industrie qui m'ont euh, permis d'avoir mes démos entendues par les équipes de production et euh, qui m'ont permis d'obtenir, en fait, euh, quelques thèmes pour des séries, euh, dont un qui joue encore après 12 saisons, le thème de prière de pas en de pleurs. Um, le, le plus gros challenge que j'ai eu au début, c'était d'apprendre des nouveaux logiciels. Je ne connaissais pas Logic, je ne connaissais pas le Sibelius et je n'avais pas le temps non plus d'être à temps plein. J'étais en tournée et tout ça. Donc, jumeler ma carrière de violoniste et en plus apprendre cette nouvelle technologie-là et en plus des connaissances requises pour la, la, la composition, tout ça, c'était quand même un, un gros challenge. <rire> Merci. Uh, Alex. Yes. Let's um let's ask you the same question. So what uh what made you decide to do a career pivot and what were some of the challenges that you faced? Yeah, um I think well I think every journey uh isn't necessarily straightforward. There's zigging and zagging along the way. And so I feel like, you know, I'm no exception to this rule at all. I feel like I've had actually like multiple pivots um because my journey, music's been my whole life and I grew up with classical music. I did the Royal Conservatory of Music uh, as a classical pianist and then jazz pianist. And um, and then I did my undergrad Bachelor of Music, Master of Music. But it was interesting because my journey at that point, I actually was directed towards more of a film scoring centric place. Uh, I was at NYU Steinhardt School of Music film scoring and uh, then basically entered this sort of uh, precipice moment where I started getting gigs in film and TV uh, world as an artist where it was like trailers and promos and in show and custom kind of gigs too on commercials, that sort of thing. I was like, this feels right. I'm going to lean into this. And then I was performing and kind of, you know, exploring a lot of that space. Uh, and then, you know, I ended up doing like cinematronic music, which is cinematic electronic and a hybrid of the two, because I'm, I'm that guy who decides to coin a genre. Uh, I basically found myself operating in that space, which was amazing. Um, but then the original sort of goal, you know, sort of kind of got a little pushed back on the back burner. So especially with the Canadian Film Center and the residency, the composer and residency program with them was a wonderful opportunity for me to 
look back on that back burner and go, that was originally what I really, really wanted to explore more of. And to be honest, the past couple of years, I've been basically doing like that secondary pivot, I guess, from uh, the sync world, advertising, and now going back into a space, which was my original intention, I guess, all along. Um, and I, I want to say too, like all the best projects, regardless of, of the space, have come from collaboration. Uh, and the ability to pivot in general, for me anyway, has been uh, from collaborative uh, actions and movements and motions where it's working with uh, another creative, working with this creative and the projects that uh, can be born from these um, moments and these relations. Well, I think... I think what's really cool is that the more the more conversations we do, we just we feel like you know, there's no one common path. And I think you know my my wife is a physician, and academic medicine where everything is very like da 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 da. And it took a long time for her to grasp the fact that like there's no set steps to doing what we do. It's just kind of this <laughs> almost this choose your own adventure sort of thing. Um, I want to go back to a couple of things that both you and and uh, and that that Alex and Nat talked about and about the support. Um, you know, Alex, you talked about the Canadian Film Center. Natalie you talked about your bandmates, but and maybe we'll start with you, Natalie. Um, what sort of support was out there uh, for you when you did your pivot? And then we'll go back to Alex after after you're done. Oui, en fait, ben quand j'ai commencé euh, cette nouvelle, ce, ce pivot, euh, les premiers supports étaient locaux, mes amis locaux, comme je disais, qui m'ont aidé à, à être entendu puis avoir à tenir mes premiers mes premiers euh, contrats à Montréal. Euh, mais après avoir fait quelques séries, quelques thèmes, euh, c'est comme si j'ai frappé un, comme un mur, je ne voyais plus où est-ce que je pouvais aller après ça. Et en termes de carrière de musique, j'avais déjà fait pas mal le tour. J'avais tourné avec plein d'artistes euh, au Québec, j'avais fait tous les coins de la province. Euh, et j'avais fait tous les shows de télé dans les house bands et tout ça. Donc, je ne voyais plus le challenge. Et je ne voyais pas l'ouverture euh, non plus parce que je voyais que l'industrie était quand même assez petite et que euh, ça ne permettait pas tant d'être inclusif, en fait. Je ne voyais pas comment moi, de femme, j'allais m'intégrer dans l'industrie, vraiment. Donc, euh, euh, en 2015, j'ai commencé à explorer euh, aux États-Unis. J'ai fait un, un premier voyage à Los Angeles, puis j'ai réalisé les opportunités qu'il y avait euh, c'est une mer immense de, de, de projets, d'opportunités, tout ça, mais en même temps, oui, il y a une compétition. Euh, J'ai eu cet appel-là d'essayer de, de me lancer dans, la, dans le bain. Et euh, pour ce faire, j'ai commencé en fait par des stages à New York. Et c'est là que j'ai rencontré plusieurs des mentors que j'ai éventuellement eu à Los Angeles parce qu'ils étaient invités sur les panels et tout ça. Et c'est là que j'ai rencontré, euh, je dirais, le plus important au début, euh, Michael Levine, qui a été, euh, qui était invité à New York. Et donc, je suis allée le voir, il est violoniste, compositeur, donc euh, on avait beaucoup de choses en commun. Et je lui ai fait part de mon rêve, donc, d'aller à Los Angeles et d'avoir euh, peut-être un premier euh, stage, quelque chose pour comprendre un peu c'est quoi l'industrie là-bas et apprendre euh, comment ça fonctionne. Donc, il m'a dit « parle à mon assistant » et quelques mois plus tard, j'avais mon premier deux mois à Los Angeles euh, à faire du café dans les studios de Los Angeles. Euh, et en fait, c'est devenu très important parce que c'est lui qui m'a introduit dans plusieurs groupes de compositeurs. C'est lui qui m'a euh, permis de rencontrer beaucoup de personnes qui font maintenant partie de mon réseau. Et c'est même lui qui m'a fait, qui m'a euh, en fait... Euh, euh, dit, euh, ben écoute, il y a le superviseur de Hallmark, apparemment il cherche des compositeurs euh, canadiens, mais à Los Angeles, donc euh, c'est comme ça que j'ai su qu'il y avait une porte ouverte, que j'ai appliqué, j'ai eu mon entrevue, que j'ai commencé à faire euh, mon premier film avec Hallmark. Donc, euh, super, c'est vraiment important, je pense que c'est crucial pour euh, pouvoir développer une carrière, de, en fait, de rencontrer ces, ces gens-là, puis de ne pas avoir peur d'aller vers eux. Merci, Nat. Uh, Alex, your turn. Um, can you talk a little bit about what sort of support was out there for you when you did your pivot? Yes, um, there was, I think, I think I actually didn't realize it took me by surprise, the support that was the resources that were available to me. Um, it wasn't until I really actively looked. I think that's the thing about support is that you can find it if you really look um, and find like-minded people too. That was a part of it as well. And for me, 
I remember I, I had coffee with Ariel Marks like several years ago, I guess, on my first trip to LA. She was actually briefly my TA at NYU uh, before I left, which was great. Um, and uh, I remember grabbing coffee and she was like, Alex, there's this thing called the AWFC and it's the Alliance for Women Film Composers. And I, I was like, oh, that sounds, I'm a woman, that feels cool, yeah, okay. Um, and, and then that sort of jump started, uh, like acted as a catalyst, I guess, for me looking into different organizations, um, and communities, uh, where there is, there is support and there are resources from contractual as well. Like if you're not sure what a template model of an agreement maybe should look like, um, ranging from that end of the spectrum and then to initial people to people where you're kind of meeting you know, again, it's like-minded people and also people with similar dreams and similar objectives. And um, yeah, I, I think for me, that was really a part of that uh, trajectory um, and getting the chance to uh, connect with people who were also not just existing in one particular space. The more I started interacting in spaces that I wanted to exist in and meeting people um, in those spaces, the more I, I suddenly had to call on that Swiss Army knife where, oh, that that tool set that I it's gathering dust, um, you know, part of my training, whatever. And I hadn't really actively touched it in a while. So now I was bringing out these sorts of things in the wheelhouse and realizing the joy uh, that uh, they were bringing me when I was bringing them out and putting them to, mo to motion and into action. And when I was back in Canada um, uh, from the States, because I lived in the States for some time, um, I looked into, there's the inaugural year with the Canadian Music Publishers Association for women in the studio. And they chose five uh, women in Canada. Um, I was one of them, which was amazing. And basically catapulted us into different environments, again, from a production, more music standpoint of engineering and not just, you know, this box, uh, but these, all of these boxes. And so I connected with, you know, a bunch of people through that, uh, Greg Wells, Linda Perry. Um, and then Linda was great. She was like, you're total dork and you're super weird. I, I really like you. And I was like, oh God, okay. Cause she's amazing and very scary. Um, and so she started kind of bringing me on projects and she asked me to reimagine what's up for Blumhouse. And that started getting me in different worlds as well. So I think, you know, it's been, it's been mentors, it's been people. Um, actually, Natalie, when you mentioned Michael Levine, I did the, that uh, mm -hmm. NYU feature film thing last June. Um, and he was, he was at that. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I think I did it's it. Just, in, I did it in did you? So. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> We're start a club. Amazing. Amazing. Alum. Um, so yeah, I think I think also like you know to echo Natalie too, like it is it sometimes can feel like um, like any like any industry. I think it can feel sometimes really tight knit and small, and suddenly you go and you put you immerse yourself in another space, and it opens up, and you realize, wow, look how many uh, fresh minds and souls actually exist in this space, and there's room. I believe there's room for everybody to be happy and interact. I mean, I don't think we're all going to be billionaires, but I don't who cares? Like, it's not about that. It's about, you know, like if you have work and you can work together, um, then I think you can really achieve, uh, these types of dreams. So yeah, it's been a smattering world soundtrack Academy. I'm a voting member. So they've been, it's been really, uh, there's resources with them as well. Um, you know, uh, SCL society of composers and lyricists is wonderful. Um, yeah. And just kind of actively seeking them out, asking questions, asking people, hey, do you know of places? And it all kind of begins with uh, like getting a coffee, um, you know, grabbing coffee with somebody or, or a heavier beverage, if that's your thing as well. <laughs> I'm going to ask you the next question, Alex, here. And what were, um, what were some of the lessons that you learned from your other life that helped you in your new one? Um, I think I'm really grateful to have learned music production in a industry, more industry standard, whatever, whatever the heck that means, um, way, uh, because it enables more time efficient action for rapid fire deadlines that exist between both, you know, film TV sync space, advertising space as, and obviously, you know, scoring for film TV space. And I think, uh, I've learned valuable or honed valuable uh, tool sets within 
you know, time efficiency uh, as well in general. Uh, step one is I just want to get on a gig or out on a project. Like I just really want to help bring the story to fruition. But step two is, oh my gosh, now people are actually answering the door and here are projects. Great. So what are you going to do? You have now you're now you're doing a juggling act and the ability to be able to uh, pull things up in a time efficient manner, I think, is so focal, um, at least in, in my experience. And it's also a trust thing. I think that's how people you can create and build trust in a relationship sense with, you know, people that you're working with, whether it be a client or another artist or a director, whoever it is, uh, trust. And in building that trust, I think being reliable. Yeah. So learning, learning sort of um, the really, the really unsexy, um, I guess, kind of time management things. And you, Natalie? Et vous? <laughs> Donc les, les euh, en fait les outils que j'ai développés euh, comme musicienne euh, me servent beaucoup parce que en fait comme musicienne j'étais disciplinée euh, il fallait que je pratique des heures par jour pour être capable de jouer les concertos pour apprendre les pièces euh, euh, et toujours avoir un haut standard parce que dans l'industrie on est toujours euh, on est toujours coté sur notre dernière job donc euh, on oublie facilement tout le, le, notre bio, ce qui compte, c'est comment on a performé la dernière fois. Donc, on est toujours sur la sellette, on va dire. Euh, et ce standard-là, ben, c'est un peu pareil dans l'industrie du film, du cinéma. Euh, on doit toujours être capable de livrer dans les temps. Euh, et si on accepte quelque chose, on le fait à 100 000 à l'heure. On le fait à 110 On ne peut pas faire rien à moitié. C'est mieux de dire non que d'accepter, puis après dire c'est pas si important, je ne ferai pas tant que ça, j'ai d'autres choses à faire. Nat, I'll ask you this. I'll, I'll ask you to start off this, and, and we'll just keep it uh, really quickly here. Uh, if you had one quick soundbite, one sort of uh, one piece of advice you could give to someone who's going to look to pivot careers, what would it be? Um, je dirais une de mes uh, citations préférées de Steven Spielberg, c'est "Écoute les um, whispers, les murmures qu'on entend, parce que c'est relié vraiment à notre instinct." Et euh, ça nous guide. Donc, on doit, on doit les suivre. Euh, une deuxième citation qui m'a beaucoup aidé, c'est « Saute et euh, le filet va apparaître. » Donc, aie confiance, suis ton rêve. Si tu suis vraiment avec tout ton cœur, tu vas trouver le support que tu as besoin. Wise words. Alex, your turn. Um... Uh, all no's are yeses in disguise. No one's going to give you permission to occupy any space. Go forth. Wonderful. It has been such a pleasure, Alex and Nat. It's been a lot of fun to talk about and, and, and to hear about how, you know, just the diversity of your career. So I just want to thank you both for taking uh, taking the time to hang out with us today. So thank, thank you. you. Merci. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is awesome. Yeah, next week. Yeah, thank you so much. For more candid conversations and free music creator resources, visit musiccreator.ca. The Screen Composers Guild of Canada acknowledges the support of the Canada Council for the Arts. Thanks for listening.